Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my releases, book tour schedule, book signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Chris Snook on the line. He's best-selling author of Digital Sense, a common-sense approach to social business strategy, marketing technology, and customer experience. And he's also board of directors over, on the board of directors over at Emerge.com. Uh, Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. All right, so I'm excited to get into today's topic. So different approaches to digital marketing campaigns for B2B. Uh, I know that is your expertise, so let's just jump right in. Uh, what should businesses be thinking about in digital marketing? It's a, it's a good question. You know, they, they have a lot to think about, and I'm sure everyone listening to this, if they've, if they've done any kind of, uh, you know, recent digital uh, marketing strategy sessions or whatever, they've been demo kinds of software. They've been pitched a bunch of stuff related to how much content they need and maybe which channels they need to be on depending on the thing. But, you know, I, I think as you uh, probably are well aware, you know, with your work, the, the difference between B2B and B2C marketing is is pretty stark. And, and a lot of the B2B marketing tactics are not wrong, but they come at a heavy cost and a heavy mm infrastructure load and so for most b2b marketers we've seen <clears throat> especially in legacy industries that are maybe what we would call sales heavy um you know which could be a, a number of things, manufacturers you know anything but SaaS, basically um where the sales cycles are long the the, the client values are pretty high meaning you know typically fifty thousand a hundred thousand dollar a year annual contracts and up but it's very relationship based a lot of the digital strategies that B2B, you know, marketers have been pitching these kind of firms just don't make sense. And mm -hmm. and so, you know, a lot of what we've seen is that a lot of those organizations find themselves kind of in no man's land where they either get half pregnant and they kind of start down that path and they invest in, you know, CRMs and then they invest in agencies and then they got to re redo their website and, and got to do some UX redesign and then, and then they hire another agency and then they, you know, then they do some keyword and paid and SEO and then they got to write blogs. It's endless, isn't it? It's endless, right? <laughs> and, and it's endless from a dollar standpoint right now. It's mm -hmm. not that it doesn't work. I mean, in, in the book, you know, we, we laid out a framework for all the different things from customer journeys to everything that you kind of need to be thinking about and how to align your organization. But the business reality for most organizations is what they want is they want leads that are qualified and that um, are likely to choose them, right? And and that's hard because 60 or 57 percent, according to a lot of the you know research out there, of the buyer's journey is completed before they ever pick up the phone and talk to your salesperson. So how do you hijack that relationship right at that point where they've been educated by everyone else, including your competitors? And then you win them into your, you know, sales cycle at a time where they're ready to receive a proposal and maybe make a buying decision. And so that's what everybody wants. Um, what they, you know, it's kind of like, why do you buy a drill? You don't buy a drill because you want a drill. You want on the wall. And, mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, what we've, what we've kind of got to balance out, I think, as media marketers today and, and as owners is what's the balance of hard cost investment, um, you know, team members that are internalized or, or vetted out through agency partners and and then what's the ROI and, and how do we map that to a strategy that isn't commoditized and is sustainable. And I think that's the question everybody's, you know, probably trying to solve for and, and maybe even frustrated by. Where do you find a lot of people are going wrong in this? Um, like, like what are some of, and I know it's going to change from company to company. Obviously, it'll change from industry, industry size to company, all those things. But I know that with working with the amount of people that you work with, you see certain themes arise. What are some of those common themes of just errors that are just blatant that you see people making? Yeah, I, well, you know, and I, errors is kind of like, you know, um, maybe the maybe the right word, maybe not the right word. And I and I say it because I'm not sure. You know, error might imply that they. They, they were stupid or they, they did something stupid, right? And I don't think that's the case. I think, you know, our best intentions as, um, 
<clears throat> as business builders in in this industry, is people have built tools, right? Built the picks and shovels for the digital gold rush, which is where all of you and I spend the majority of our time, especially on our handset, and where the 20 to 30 year olds that are now moving into management and, and more decision making roles at almost every company in the world, that native digital native individual is living there, right? And that doesn't matter whether they're B2B or whether they're B2C focused. And so I don't think it's like an error in, in the sense of um, stupidity. I think it's, or, or, you know, miscalculation. I think it's an error of inertia, which is that we've kind of, we've now created a whole generation of, of people that are moving into decision-making roles that are digitally native and that um, kind of work one way. And we're still being governed by, uh, two generations, one which is, you know, my generation, Gen X, that is kind of comfortable in a digital world but grew up without it and so has this kind of interesting understanding of both, you know, both systems. And then you have uh, the older generation, which has kind of been pulled into a digital interface but really isn't, you know, is analog by by DNA and by, by paradigm. And so you've got – different opinions on, you know, um, how and where that budget should go. And, and then you've got both sides being right. And so what a lot of times happens is you get midway commitments to one or the other. And specifically in these older, uh, or I don't want to call them older, in these more legacy business models that are sales heavy, marketing light in general, regardless of digital or, or analog as the medium, you know, when you have 10 salespeople to one marketer in organization because, that's how you've sold million dollar barge loads of crates or that's how you've sold, you know, anything that is uh, maybe a tangible B2B good where people, when they search on Google, it doesn't really help if they search internet marketing firm, right? Because everybody and their brother showed up from the kid on Instagram with a little influence to, you know, um, the, the largest agency in New York, right? It's like, it's not specific enough. So, these these things where they're persona based or where they're keyword based, they work really well in B two C because you can you can target based on you know keywords, persona, SKUs, things that people are actually shopping for, and then you can optimize for conversion. And typically, you get it because the price point and the decision tree is more immediate, right? And it's needs based. In B two B, the need is there. But the decision tree isn't immediate because typically these are decisions you don't unwind, right? It's not a $20 T-shirt you can throw out and buy a new one. These are, you know, relationships that maybe your business can't function without. So if you get them wrong, it really hurts, right? And and so the old school way of doing that was, you know, you went to trade shows or you went to conferences, and people still do that today, obviously, but it was very sales heavy, very phone heavy. And... You know, you got educated by the salesperson, probably more than, more often than not. Maybe you got educated by some analog brochure or some kind of thing that got sent in the mail, right? Um, and that now has morphed into content marketing and and kind of a more robust awareness around even the creation of this problem that I didn't even know I had, right? Like I didn't know my data was unstructured until you told me what unstructured data was and how I could use it, and so. As B2B SaaS has really kind of proliferated and created all these new efficiencies in the funnel, so to speak, um, it's created this whole need for content, 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 and relevant, 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 and this whole educational thing that now can be self-directed, but it can also be very noisy, and it's also expensive because it doesn't necessarily map directly to a conversion. I might spend all this money educating someone, and then my fear is they're going to go to my competitor and buy from them. I, and, and, you know, yes, I can say, well, the same is going to happen in reverse, but maybe not at the same ratio, right? And so these are, mm-hmm. these are the arguments, I think, that organizations have. And so the error is they're not educated enough on what they're – they're not simplifying it enough to what am I really wanting, and then what digital channels and strategies do I need to deploy, and then who ultimately is my best customer? Because that's the one thing that we kind of ground them in, which is instead of persona-based or keyword-based, we're encouraging people to be very sniper rifle kind of pinpoint executive buyer decision maker based. If you can tell me who your best 10 customers are for the last five years, title, rank, age, weight, you know, region, mm-hmm. uh, size of company, um, industry, those kind of things. And if that is going to probably continue into the next decade, 
there are tools now that you can deploy without a lot of setup, without a lot of overhead, without a lot of internal headcount, you know, learning new softwares and all this stuff that seems like just minutia, um, to just get those people in front of your salespeople much more frequently. And that's what we're seeing our companies do is, and, and that's what Emerge, you know, kind of was founded on, which was, you know, how to just go to the 10 people you want and then essentially look like them, but go get 2,000 of them for every salesperson nurtured on a, on a weekly and daily and monthly basis in a real relationship with you at scale. Because if they're talking to your people or if they're, if you're top of mind, then you're going to get that hole in the wall much faster, which is your opportunity to sell. So, um, it, it's kind of like, back to go forward type of thing. That's awesome, Chris. And so um I can talk to you about this all day long. I mean I, I love I love what you're talking about. I love the different um the different thought process around targeting avatar, creating an avatar. I mean you didn't use that word but the same thing, creating an avatar, your ideal customer, your ideal client profile, um many different ways to say it and really getting and duplicating that at scale and really um making your salespeople focus on the right uh, Target for your business and who who makes well. And I, I, mean, I, I want to clarify one thing. I I'm saying not an avatar, right? What I'm saying is that let's let's just talk about your business because I, I I like what you're doing and I'm and I've used it as a tactic publishing in books, you know, for years. Wiley did the last one, but I I self published three before that, and I pretty much in every business I ever did wrote a book at some level since 2006. And there was a strategy behind it, just like I know you have a strategy, right? It was about having this business card on steroids that was very tangible. That was a physical thing. Sure, it could be consumed in digital form and audio and all these other things. But the reality is, is that if I hand you a physical hardback book that's 248 pages or whatever digital set is, and I give it to you and my name's on the front and I sign it with my phone number in it, you're not throwing that out, right? And that's a relationship. So if I know that I need to sell Adam Torres or at, let's say Adam Torres is my uh, customer and he's one of my sweet spot customers. He represents my strike zone. Right. If I could have a thousand of him, I'm King Kong in my industry. Well, if I know Adam Torres is a real person in my company and he buys from me and I just want to know how many more Adam Torres there are, I'm not looking for avatars. What I'm looking for is people on LinkedIn, like, you know, in other databases at companies that are just like Adams, right? That have the same role and that the guy's name is Joe Gibson or whatever. And he's at one, two, three Main Street in wherever. And I'm sending them a copy of the book. That's one example. Right now, that's not the strategy. That's a tactic inside the strategy. But the point is, what we're talking about with Emerge is I'm not spending any money on stuff that doesn't do that. Because if I can do that a 1,000 times a month, 2,000 times a month with both physical and digital-related content that's relevant, Adam and Joe and Bob and Susie and every other real person doing that job with that problem now knows who I am, and they feel connected to me in a way that is real. And that's, awesome. what, is, that's, what, we're, that's what we're seeing works, and that's what is worth the investment. The ROIs are exponential right now. The arbitrage is huge because everyone else is wasting money on, on keywords and things like that that just put them in a funnel that ends up educating them for when I have my book in their lap, and they go, holy crap, this guy knows his stuff, and I pick up the phone and call me after everyone else has done their job educating them. And that's what you're trying to, you know, help people do, and, that, and that's an example. It's not an avatar. It's a real person. So, Chris, if somebody's listening to this and they will learn more about Emerge or to follow up and learn about your book or anything else, any other project you're working on, um, what's the best way for them to do that? You know, the best way, twofold. One, visit Emerge.com, E-M-E-R-G-E-D.com, and, you know, literally we you can you can request a – a complimentary report. We'll do an analysis. We'll see if you know, see if there's a list of folks out there that are real human beings that can be nurtured for you. And if not, you know, we'll point you in a different direction. But that's that's the easiest way to kind of just take no risk and and see that. And then the second way to connect to me personally or or whatever, just go on LinkedIn and um, connect to Chris J Snook and um, you know, find me on LinkedIn and say hello and uh, let me know that you like the podcast and and that you're a fan of Adams. And you know, we'll we'll connection. 
Awesome, man. Well, hey, Chris, it's been awesome having you on the show today, um, and thank you for sharing all your tips and insights. And uh, the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store, uh, share us with your friends and your family. I mean, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. I really do appreciate it. And uh, Chris, thanks again for coming on the show.